Hey, what's up everybody? This is Always back with another video on the channel. Uh, this video is going to be about Java JDBC with MySQL. So it's a complete course. I've done that before in the separate video. So I actually decided to combine my courses into one video so people don't have to go and search in the playlist. So this is a complete course and let's go and learn Java JDBC with MySQL. What is up everybody, this is Always back with another video and today I'm starting a new course on Java JDBC. In this tutorial series we will learn how to connect to a MySQL database using JDBC and how to read data and write data to our database. The database we're going to use is MySQL, you need a local installation of the server. I'll show you how to do that, I'll be using MAMP but there's another one Example. So it's up to you which one you want to use. So this is the first section of the course. I will teach you how to install a map, how to make sure that you have a proper JDK installed and how to set it up over MySQL databases and how to create a username and password and how to access those database from JDBC. If you're a little confused at what I'm talking about, what is JDBC, and if you have never used a MySQL database before, then don't worry, I will take you guys from beginner to the level you can develop a proper application. I'm going to have a proper project at the end of this course where I will develop one of the database software in Java using JavaFX or normal GUI Java using Swing library. Alright, so the next thing you need to do, get to your computer, stretch your body, relax and get ready to code in Java. The first thing we need to check, do we have a Java JDK installed in our PC? So you go to your command prompt or if you're using Mac, then go to terminal and uh, type here Java space dash version and it will give you an answer if you have a java install it will tell you the version of java i have java 1.8 which is the latest one so make sure you have a java 7 or above now we have a java install and if you haven't installed java in your pc then now you need to go to java jdk oracle website actually so maybe just go to google and search for java jdk java jdk download and you will get to the page where you can download Java and install Java and if you want a tutorial on that I have a tutorial how to install Java and set it up in Windows PC uh, check out the playlist of Java essential training on my channel and the next thing we need is uh, MAMP server so I'm just gonna search for MAMP I've already downloaded that and I've already installed that but here I'm going to show you that you need to install this map not the map pro because that's a paid version so just install this map so once you install that download and install and then I'm just going to start and I'll show you what is the setting you need to do and then we need so right now the map server is installing I just want to show you that by default if I go to the preference and by default you might have a different port so right now the port is 3306 80 and 80 so if it's not that port then you can click on set web and mysql default port to this it will change the port and then it will set it to this so make sure you have these ports on and the next thing we start the server our server is working we're going to be using mysql database so we need a connector for that I want you to go to mysql.com website and in the download section you need to go to community and then we're gonna find mysql connectors so just click on that and then here you have the connector for .NET, Java, Node.js, Python, C++, all those languages so we need a connector for Java so just click on connector slash j I'll use the zip file instead of tar file so let's just download that it's gonna ask you to sign up we don't have to sign up you can click here no thanks just start my download it's going to download those uh, that file and then alright so the JDBC connector file has been downloaded the next step we need to do is create our database in the map click on open web page it's going to take us to the browser and it's going to take us to this main page for the server on this page click on tools 
and then click on PHP MyAdmin, which will take you to PHP MyAdmin page. Here we will create a new database. So let's just click on this new, and I'm going to name the database school. Let's create a database. And I've actually already created some tables. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna import those tables. So let's just go click on import. I drop a link to this file in the description. Check it out if you are following along. Now let's just click on choose file. We go to Dropbox, and I have the file here. School. Now let's just click on go. It's going to download that file and save those tables to the school database. Now in the school database, we have this teacher. We have student table. So in the student table, I have few students here. We have four students and we have four teachers here. All right, so the database is done. And one more thing we need to do is how do we ac access this uh, database? We need to create a username for that. So if you go back to home and in the home, you will see user tab, click on that. And then here we have default users. I actually have my own username so db user localhost and I have the password for that but to create a new username you just click on add user and then name the username so I'll type always and then password we just type Mirza and then for the database privileges you select all so click on check all Now let's create our username and then click on go to create a username and we're finally done. I have already have one username named DB user and DB password. I might use that one but this is how you can create a username and this is how you can import the database we have here. So if you don't know how to create a database you can import the same database as I did. I'll drop a link in the description check it out you can download that SQL file and then just import that. All right, so now our database uh, functionality is done. We have created a database, what we're going to use for this course. We created a username, how, that's how we can access this database. And that's it for this video, guys. In the next video, we will learn how to connect to this database using that connector we downloaded from mysql.com. All right, so thank you so much for watching and I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Chase. What is going on everybody? This is always back with the next video of Java JDBC with MySQL training course and in this video we are going to learn how to connect to database. So in the last video we downloaded this map server, we set it up and we downloaded our MySQL connector for Java from MySQL.com and we created a new database named School. Let me just show you quickly if I'm going to open my PHP admin and here we have a database named school that's what we're going to access and I've shown you how to create this in the last video and how to create a username and password to access this database. Now we have successfully created the database we got the drivers and we got the MAMP server running. So now it's time for us to create a new Java project and then try connecting through a Java program to this database. Now I'm just going to minimize MAMP Let's create a new project now. I'm just going to click here to create a new project. Select category is Java. Project is Java application. Next. And let's just say JDBC sample for the name of our project and then click finish to create a project. All right, so in the project, I'm just going to get rid of these comments here. All right, so now we have created a project the first thing we need to do is we need to add that jar file which is a connector file in java libraries so in the project browser i'm just going to right click and then click on add jar and folder file and now you need to browse where you downloaded this mysql connector.java this bin.jar file so select that and then make sure you select copy to libraries folder and we're going to click on open and it's going to add that uh, jar file which is a connector file from connecting to mysql database so this is the file we have now we're going to use it so what we need to connect to database we need three things we need a username we need a password for database 
and we need a link to database so let's create three constant variables I'm just gonna type private static final and type a string username is equal to in double quotation type the password or username so DB user and private static final string password is equal to and then double quotation type the password whatever the password is set so db password which is the password i have and then we need to have a link for our database so let's just create a new static variable for that i'm gonna name it con Uh, let's just name it the connection con it's fine and then here we need to type JDBC colon MySQL colon double slash and the local host so the server is our local host that's why we type in local host if you are accessing on the web then you need to type the proper link so local host slash the name of our database so let's go and check out what was the name of the database and in the PHP my admin, I can see that I have this database school, so that's what I'm trying to access. So let's just type the name of that database as chll school and add a semicolon. So we have three variables constant variables, which has a username, which has a password, and then we have a link for that. Now let's just go to the main method and we are going to use that. Well, we can create an instance of a connection class, so type connection, okay and let's just name it con is equal to null okay it's gonna give us error because we have to import that connection so click on this bolt and make sure you select import for java.sql connection not com.mysql.connection right so just select this java.sql connection on top we have connected and now let's use that very well so let's just type con is equal to i'm going to use another class which is a driver manager for sql dot get connection all right so in the connection i'm going to press control space again and let's see we have three options we have the get connection with the url get connection with the property info get connection with the username and password so i'm going to select the third one and the first variable is our connection link so that's the link we have so we pass in that connection variable into this and then we have a username and then we have a password so now let's just add a semicolon this should be fine now we need to import for another class so click here and uh, there's no class actually so we this is basically giving us an exceptions we need to handle that we can add this in try and catch block or we can just throw a clause for SQL connection in our main method so this is the uh, throwing ex SQL exception that will remove this and now let's just print out uh, something if that happens so let's just start the system out and let's connect it if there is no errors and we are successfully connected to database then it will print out connected now let's just run the application and let's see if we are connected or not all right so it print out connected that means we are successfully connected to database there's a few things you could do i just want to show you one more thing here uh, there is a statement here class dot for name and uh, this basically I mean, just gonna try the first com dot mysql jdbc and here we type driver okay so what this code is doing basically is just letting you import that uh, this driver file into the memory but if you're using java 6 or 7 or above i'm using java 1.8 so that means uh in java 1.8 we don't have to add this statement to access the database so that was for old jdk so if you're using the old ones then you have to add this statement otherwise you're good to go and then what we can do here we can add this to try and catch block as well because every connection we open we need to close that as well so to make this more uh, portable I'm just gonna add the try and catch block and we're just gonna cut this code and then paste it here all right and then in exception we're gonna catch SQL exception and if there is still an action we're gonna print out so s out system dot error dot print 
So let's just print this and we can type E. And now we have uh, cached the SQL exception and we're printing out the E, whatever the exception would be if it there is. And then we need to close the connection. It's a good practice to do that. So here we type finally, and here we're gonna type if con, the variable we're using, is equal to, not equal to null, then we're gonna close this con dot close method. And we are opening a connection here and then we're closing the connection here. So that's a good practice. Let's run one more time and let's see if we're connected. So, all right, so we are successfully connected to database. All right, so we connected to database now. Before we finish this video, I just wanna show you the Java documentation as well. So here we use the connection and driver manager class. We use this get connection method. And there's a lot of people that get confused about where the hell these things coming from and how we as a developer, we know what, what class to use. So I'm just gonna show you guys the Java documentation so you can explore documentation and learn yourself as well. Let's go to the Java documentations. I am in the main Java documentation page and here in the packages, what I wanna scroll to, I want to scroll to java.sql package. In that package, we have interfaces, we have classes. So let's look at the classes. So we use this driver manager class to get the connection as well. And in the interfaces, we use this connection interface. Let's look at it. So you can read about interface, what it does, what it um, basically just uh, lets you connect to database. And then in that connection, we use this uh, driver manager dot that connection class. And we have the same class here. And in that, we use this uh, get connection, which is which uh, let us to put in the string username and password. So that's what we use. And uh, that's it. So you can read through this documentation. Documentations are very helpful for your uh, learning. And uh, in the next video, we are going to learn about uh, something like, you know, statements, result sets, and how to retrieve data and how to modify data. So thank you so much for watching and I'll talk to you guys in the next video. And stay blessed and I'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers. What is up everybody, this is Always back with the next video of Java JDBC Central Training Series. This is a part three. And uh, yeah, that's not me actually. That's just a picture I found on the internet. That's kind of cool. So I'm just putting it to make the video a bit cooler. So in the last few videos, we'll learn how to create a database, how to import database to MySQL, how to create a username, and we'll learn how to download a Java JDBC connector for MySQL databases. We downloaded it from mysql.com and we created a program which was a really simple basic program. What basically it did, it just connected the program to databases and print out if the program is connected to database. So, so far we have done that, but we didn't really discuss about Java JDBC drivers. So that's what I wanna discuss before we jump into learning how to read data from database, how to modify data and how to update data to MySQL database. We need to understand JDBC drivers. There are about four types of drivers available and we need to understand which one to use and when to use. So JDBC drivers implements the defined interface in the JDBC API for interacting with a database's server. It could be MySQL database server, Oracle or SQLite, whatever the servers you have. For example, using JDBC drivers enables you to open database connection and to interact with it by sending SQL or database commands, and then you can receive results with Java. The Java SQL package that ships with JDK contains various classes with their behaviors defined, and their actual implementation are done in the third-party drivers, So, such as in the last video we downloaded JDBC drivers from MySQL to use MySQL database servers. Third-party vendors implement the Java SQL.drivers interface in their database drivers, so they are able to use with JDBC. Now we're gonna look at some Java JDBC driver types. Type number one we have is JDBC ODBC bridge driver. So a JDBC bridge is used to access ODBC driver installed on each client machine. 
Using ODBC requires configuring on your system a data source name that represents the target database. When a Java was came out, this was a very useful drivers because the most databases only supported ODBC access, but now this type of drivers is only recommended for experimental use or when no other alternative is available. The next driver type we have JDBC native API. So JDBC API calls are converted into native C slash C++ API calls, which are unique to the database. These drivers are typically provided by the database vendor and used in the same manners as the JDBC ODBC bridge. This type of drivers must be installed on each client machine. If we change the database, we have to change the native API as well as it is specific to database. You may realize some speed increase with the JDBC native API drivers because it eliminates ODBC overhead. The Oracle Call Interface OCI drivers is an example of JDBC native API drivers. The next type of drivers we have is JDBC Net Pure Java. So in this type of driver, a three-trial approach is used to access database. The JDBC client uses standard network socket to communicate with a middleware application server. The socket information is then translated by a middleware application server into a call format required by DBMS and forwarded to database server. The kind of driver is extremely flexible since it requires no code install on the client and a single driver can actually provide access to multiple databases. You think of the application server as a JDBC proxy, meaning it makes calls from the client application as a result and you need some knowledge of application server configuration in order to effectively use this type of drivers. So the last type of drivers we want to talk about is 100% pure Java type drivers. A pure Java based drivers communicates directly with the vendor database through a socket connection. This is the highest performance drivers available for database and is usually provided by vendor itself. If you have watched my first video or second video in which I've shown you how to download a MySQL database driver for Java from their own website which was mysql.com so that is an example of a pure 100% Java drivers. Alright guys, so that's it for this video. We discussed the four types of Java and that's my buddy saying bye bye to you guys and we'll talk to you guys in the next video with the uh, reading data from database and modifying data and so on. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching the video and I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Chase. What is up everybody? This is Waze back with the next video of Java JDBC Central Training Series. In the last video, we created this code in which we created a connection to our database using the username and password and string, which is a link to our database. So in this video, we are going to learn how to retrieve data from database. We need to use two classes for that, statement class and result set class. You can check them out in a Java documentation if you want to learn more about them. So let's just use that class, so type statement. And let's just give a name of stmt is equal to null. We're going to instantiate it with null. And then we need a result set class. So result set from SQL. And we're just going to name it rs. We're going to initiate it with null. First thing we need to import the statement class. So just click here, add import for. Make sure you don't import any wrong one. Import for java.sql statement, which will get rid of the error. Now let's go to the try block. We have our connection object con here. Now we're going to use the statement object. So I'm just going to type the variable name for that. Actually, object name is equal to. We're going to use con dot create statement. Notice that there are a few different versions of create statement method. A default statement method is returned when you don't pass any argument. There is also a version of method where you can set the type of a result set and its concurrency. And that's the version that I'm going to use. The default set version will differ from one database to another database. With MySQL, the default result set object is scrollable. 
That means that you can move the cursor up and down going to the first row and the last row, the moving around as you like. But many databases, the default result set type is forward only, meaning that the cursor will start before the data and you will be able to move forward to the end. But you won't be able to move it back and I would like to set my code to override that. The default get result that's scrollable, so I'm going to set a result set type to constant that look like result set, and I'll choose the constant type type scroll instensive. And the second, we're gonna type result set again dot, and we're gonna define whether this uh, statement is only readable or update table. So I'm just gonna read the data from the table right now. So I'm just gonna start concur underscore read underscore only. And let's just add semicolon at the end. Now we have created the statement and then we are going to use our result set object which is rs I mean is equal to and then we're gonna execute the SQL query on that statement. So just type stmt dot execute query. And here in that we are going to pass in SQL statement which is going to be select asterisk from and you need to type the table name now. So the table name is students. Now to test the results, I'm going to find out how many rows are returned in JDBC. There isn't a single property of the result set object that you can look at. So instead you move the cursor to the last row of the result set and then find out what row number you are on. I'll use this code rs.last. The last method means you move the cursor to the end of the result set and then I'll do a little bit of system output and I'll output a string uh, with rs.getRow method. Let's run the application now and let's see what result we get. I'm supposed to get 4 in result because we have 4 rows in student table. Now let's go to the phpMyAdmin and in student table I can see that I have four rows so I get the right answer and our JDBC is connected to MySQL and we're getting the right results. The last thing we, in this video we need to do is uh, close our statement object and the result set. So we open the connection and then we close in the finally. So now we're going to do the same thing with the statement. So type stmt. If it's not null then we have to close it. That's the best practice. So type stmt.close method on it and this is going to close that. And that same thing we need to do with the result set as well. So rs then not equal to null and then type rs close method. This will close that. Alright, so one thing I want to mention here that you see once we close once we open the connection first and then we created the statement and then we create to use the result set so you need to close these things once you open that so if you are opening the result set at the last then you need to close the result set at the first so i'm going to change this con to rs okay and then change this to rs now the second one is we opened the second last we opened was stmt so now we close stmt on the second that's fine and then the first one we open connection then at the last we close the connection so con so you need to remember the way you open that's the way you close it so the last open thing will be closed first and then the second last and then the whatever comes next Alright, so that's it for this video guys and that's how we open a connection, we create a statement and then we use the result set to read data from database and that's it for this video. I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Chase. What is up everybody, this is always back with the next video of Java JDBC Central Training Series. So in the last few videos we created this code in which we created uh, a connection to our database and we retrieve a get row method and we got the get row from students table from our database so if you're working on a big project you might want to create a new class for just a connection so you can use that class to get the connection anywhere from your application so i'm going to show you how to do that so let's go and create a new class 
and we can name it DB connection click on finish to create a class and now in this class we just want to get rid of these comments all right so in the class the first thing we need we need three uh, constant variables what we're gonna get from our main class this these are the uh, three variables we need so we're just gonna cut it from here and I'm just gonna paste them into our DB connection class now so just make a little bit of space and now we got three constant variable which has our username password and connection link here we're gonna create a new method where we can receive a connection so type public static and the type is going to be connection interface and then get connection is going to be method name and now in the in this connection first let's import this uh, connection interface to our class and now here we just need to return the connection so type return and here I'm gonna go back to JDBC sample .java class and we need this driver manager dot get connection we need this code so cut that and let's go back to the JDBC connection class paste it here click OK and now we need to cache the exception so here if you click on this bolt you will see add throw clause for Java dot SQL exception so just click on that this will remove the error now in our application we can use this class to get the connection from database so let's go back to JDBC sample .java. now we need to use the instance of DB connection class so type DB connection dot get connection alright so now if I run the application I should get the same result I should get the four rows from the database table alright so we have connected that's fine and then four rows so that's how you can create a new class where you can add the connection coordinate and then you can access the connection from anywhere in your application that's the best practice I have previously described in the video series JDBC resources need to be closed when you are done with them the connection the statement and the result set are the example of these resources so you declare your resources first and initially set them to null then you actually instantiate them within a try block as I've done here and then you close them in finally block first and making sure that they're not null so you don't have to cause yet another error now all of this code can feel a little bit confusing but in Java 6 and Perrier it's simply required but Java 7 however it gives us a new syntax called try with resources the try with resources syntax look like this you add the code after the try keyword and before the code block you create a set of parentheses and then you can instantiate your JDBC resources within those parentheses and they will be closed automatically for you when the try and catch block is executed you will not need finally block at all this works because the kinds of object you can place into the try with resources section including any object that implements interface called closable or auto closable let's take a look at a documentation for a connection interface as an example the auto closable interface which has many sub interfaces and many implementing classes has just a single required method called close which return void so any object that implements this interface or implement closable which has the same requirement can be added to try with resources block and if you take a look at the java docs for the result set the statement and other similar jdbc classes and the interfaces you will find that they all have this close method and that's because they all implement the interface auto closable or closable let's go back to the code now i'm going to copy connection statement result set and i'm going to paste that after the try keyword in the parentheses and we're just going to fix up the tabulation here and then we're going to copy the code in front of uh, con and then i'm going to paste instead of null there and then same for scmt object and then rs which is our result set and now we don't need this con equal to stmt is equal to rs is equal to just just delete them 
Now, because of these objects have been placed within the try with resource section, when the application is finished executing the try catch block and their close matter will be called automatically. And if they are null, that is if they haven't been created for some reason, they won't throw an error. And that means that I don't need this finally block. I'll select the code and I will delete it. And now I will run the application and let's see if we get the same results or not. Now as you can see that we got connected to database and we got the result back 4 rows in a student table. The last thing we're going to talk about is if you're working with Java 7 you can significantly reduce the amount of code that's required to connect to database and execute SQL statement. And if you're working with Java 6 and previous versions, you will still need to use all the syntax, declaring the object first and setting them to null and then instantiating them in a try block and closing them in a final block. And if you're working in Android as of that today of this recording, Android will all follow the rules of Java 6, so you won't be able to use try with resources syntax there. So, but in Java 7, the things have been improved significantly. I encourage you to choose try with resources block. Alright guys, so thanks for watching. If you liked the video, smash the like button and don't forget to subscribe. And I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Cheers. What is up everybody, this is Always back with the next video of Java JDBC Essential Training Series. So in the last video we'll learn how to create a separate class for our connection. And in this video I'm going to show you how to loop through a result set. So let's go to phpMyAdmin in the school database. I have this table students in which I have four entities. So I have four students in this uh, in this table. So I'm going to show you how to loop through with this data. Let's go back to NetBeans. I will highly recommend you create a separate class, a separate package for a specific work. So if your application get bigger and bigger, it's very easy to manage. So you need to learn how to design the software or application. So what I'm going to do to access that students table, I'm going to create a new class. So let's just right click on the package and then create a new class. Uh, maybe we can add a new package. So I'm going to add a new package. I'm going to name it table, tables. And let's click on finish. And in that package, I'm going to create a new class now. So in Java class. So we're going to name our class the same as a table name, which is students. And let's click on finish. Now let's get rid of these comments. All right, so in the class, we need to create a method which will retrieve a data from that table. Type public static void, and let's just name our method display or get students. And then here we're going to pass in argument which is going to be result set. So press enter to import that and let's just name it RS and then just let's just come down. Now we need to use a loop to loop through the data from that table. So I'm going to use a while loop for that. So just type while and we're going to select the while loop with the condition. So in the condition we're going to pass in RS dot the next method, right? So let me read this description. So basically it moves the cursor forward one row from its current position. If there is any data, it will go to the next row. So let's just select that. Now we can use a string buffer class. So let's just type string buffer and I'm just going to name it buffer. Yeah, the buffer is fine. This is called the new string buffer. Let's go back and look at the table. So in the table we have columns, right? So we have ID column, we have first name column, last name, DOB, class and email. So for each column, we need to loop through it. Let's go back to NetMains and I'll show you. Okay, we need to import the string buffer as well. And there's an error for exception as well. We just add the SQL exception error. And now here, we're going to append a table to it. So let's just say, we're going to say here, buffer use that object dot append 
and here we can just uh, type let's say students okay I'm gonna say student ID space and then we're gonna concatenate it with a method on RS RS dot and if we go back to PHP my admin we see the data type for ID is int so we can get the method get int okay and here we're gonna just pass in the name of our column which is ID now we got the student ID table and then we're gonna buffer append and we can just get the name as well so to get the name I'm just gonna say student name or maybe just uh, after the ID we can just say name so rs dot get string so why am I using get string because the first name type is the string type so here we can say first underscore name and we forgot the semicolon again add a semicolon just gonna verify the name so the first name first underscore name that's fine that's the table name now we are going to add uh, the last name as well so let's just say buffer dot append and then here we can use rs dot get string again because that's the string data type and then say last underscore name and uh, one more thing we should do here we just add a space here okay we can't add a space here so what we need to do we need to add the space plus and then concatenate with the space okay so if you want to add a space here so concatenate and add a double quotation and add a parenthesis okay because that's the table name or column name we're accessing we cannot add space there it's going to give us an error so we got that and then we need buffer dot append now what we need we need date of birth all right so for date of birth we can just say r s dot date okay get date and then what was the the column name that's dob so just type dob and that's it for this now for now let's just leave that here and then let's try running it there's an error in the code here which gonna remove this uh, okay so after we get everything done here we need to print out right so what we're gonna do I'm going to use s out for system out and here we can say a buffer dot to string let's just remove this uh, empty space here we don't need that now let's just save this uh, class now let's go to main class and we need to get rid of this rs.last and now we're going to import that package with that class so uh, on the top we can see import jdbc sample dot tables dot students so we have imported that now let's use that class and here we can type students dot get students and pass in our result set object which is this which let us get uh, from students table all right so simply let's just run the project now and let's see if we get the results all right cool so we got student id i'm just going to show you to go to the student class and if we can get the result back yeah so here we are getting student id which is just a string and then we got this rs.id that is the id there and then we got the name we actually forgot to add a space there that's why one and michelle is just stick to each other so we need to add the space here and then we got the first name and then space and then last name and then space and then we got a date of birth as well so if we go back to and uh, we see that the student table has the michelle on number one number two tom katie and a waste at number four and we got the dob as well so that is how you can loop through the data and uh yeah that's it for this video guys and the next video is going to be about 
how to move cursor, a scrollable cursor um, in the results set up and down. Okay, so that's what we're going to talk about in the next video. Thanks for watching. And if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And you can actually download this code. I upload that on GitHub. Uh, there's a link in the description. Check it out. And uh, yeah, that's it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching. And I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Cheers. What is up, everybody? This is Always back with the next video of Java JDBC Essential Training Series. In the last few videos, we created this code which we were able to retrieve a data from the database. Uh, if you are watching this tutorial and you haven't watched the previous tutorial, you might get confused. But uh, let me just show you the database we have. So I'm just going to go to Chrome browser. In my PHP, my admin, in my SQL database, I have this school database. I have two tables in this database, students and teacher. Let's go and review the code one more time. So in our main class, I'm making a connection. I'm retrieving a connection from DB, DB connection class, where I passing in my username and password and connection link. And then we are getting connection in our main class from that class. Now we created a statement with using of this connection and the result set type is type scroll insensitive. That means I can scroll my cursor up or down and our result set is read only. Now if I run the code and I get all the students I have in the students table. So I'm retrieving data from student table here. But what if you want to retrieve a particular student or you want to retrieve a data for the first student or the last student or anywhere in the middle. So that's what we're going to learn in this video. I have one more class here which is a student class which basically retrieving all the data from students table. So we just leave that here. This is the code for that students.getstudent.rs. What I'm going to do here, I'm just going to leave that here but I'm going to go down here. And now the first thing what I want to do, I want to take my cursor and move that to the last. So to move the cursor to the last, you can just pass in the rs.last method. So rs is our result set variable and we're passing on the last method on it. Now at this point, our cursor is at the last row in the database. Now if I print out, let's say, if just let's just print out something here so here we can say rs dot get string and then here I'm going to pass in the column name so that would be first name we're gonna get the first name for the last student so first name here and now if I run the application it should print out the last student so here the last student first name is always let's go back to the database here as you can see the last student I have is my name there. I'm going to go back to net means now. So at this point our cursor is at the last position and we're retrieving the student uh, name, the last student name from this first underscore name column. I have the column here as you can see on the top first name and the last name DOB class and email here and then we have the ID for each student. Now let's look at uh, a different way. So here I'm going to remove this code here and then we're going to print out. So the first thing I'm going to say that the last student is and then we're going to append ID first. So let's say rs.getInt and then here we can pass in our table name which is ID. Now, if you are getting confused about, I'll just use the string, I need to get int here. Alright, so if you are getting confused about why am I using int here, because our data type for this table is int. So once we created this table, we put in that the data type for id is going to be int. That is why I am retrieving as int here. And now, we are going to append a space here. So let's just say empty uh, double quotation and then concatenate again. Now we need to retrieve the first name so rs dot get string which is a data type for the first name. So get string here we can type first underscore name or table name and then after this we need last name for that. So just uh, add a space here again and then concatenate it with rs dot get string method again on our result set and then here we can say 
last underscore name and we can get the date of birth as well so now we need to add another space for the database date of birth actually so let's just go to the next line and then concatenate it with the space one more time and then we are going to use the method rs dot get date all right and here we can say dob which is our column name let's go and verify that so dob is a column name in database now if i run this code it should give me the last student here as you can see the last student is four which is the id Avais Mirza is the name and date of birth is this. Alright, so now I'm going to show you how to move the cursor. So it's just going to make a bit of space here. And now we are going to, let's say, I'm going to take the cursor rs.first. So we're going to check the what is the first student. So I'm just going to copy this code and then we paste it here. Alright, so now our cursor should be the last so now we have all the details here because we're getting this code and then we have the last student and we got ID of result and date of birth and then here we're seeing last student but it's actually the first student it's just a string so we can change this to first and let's run the code again and now we're getting first student is one Michelle and the name and the date of birth of the student so as you can see on the top we have Michelle is on number one now this is the last and this is the first what about if I wanna take a particular student which uh, which is on number four or number three so for that we can use another method so rs dot absolute there's a and then it needs an int so we're gonna say what is the third student here now our cursor is on third so now if I just print out the same statement so just gonna copy this and paste it here so now we can say student is and now let's just run it and let's see what student we get so at the last line we have this three which is actually right so on number three we have Katie and that's what we're getting I'm just gonna comment this out and to make it like a little bit more cleaner so we have the first which is our last student first student and then on number three student so what it's basically doing is when the compiler comes to this line it moves the cursor to the last okay whatever the rows we have it's gonna move the cursor to the last and then when it's come to this line it print out the statement which basically retrieving the data where our cursor is so our cursor is at last right now so that's why we're getting the last student and here we have the first student because our cursor will go to the first in the row to the first row and then we will print out this so that's why we're getting the first student and by using the absolute method we can put the cursor wherever we want so there's so many uh, there are a few more options here but you can explore in java documentation so that is how you can move your cursor and retrieve a particular data from your database what is up everybody this is always back with the next video of java jdbc essential training series so in the last couple of videos i've been showing you how to retrieve data from the database in this video we are going to learn about prepared statement I have a program here I'm just gonna show you what it's going to do so I'm gonna play the application and I'm gonna type 300 here so if I 300 then it's gonna give me three results let me just take you to the database here so we have four entities in our student table and the fee is 400 for this student, 300 for this student, and 200 for this student, and 100 for this student, right? We're going to go back to NetBeans, and I will run the application again. So if I type 100, and it will give me only one student, because the student fee, yeah, the Michelle has $100 fee. On the tour in SQL statement, you can see we are selecting from students where fee is less than and then we got the question mark which is a placeholder so this is the code that you can use to retrieve data from database so let's say if you are building a project about something a market or you want some prices from this to this price and you want to retrieve just that data so you can use this kind of logic here so that's what we're going to build and and let's go and get started let me show you the database we have 
So in the students table, I have four students here. Every student have a different fee here. So hundred dollar, two hundred for second student, three hundred for third, and four hundred for fourth. So what if we can write a program which can retrieve the data according to the fee? So if I want to write a program which will retrieve uh, students with three hundred or less than three hundred dollar fee. So let's go back to NetBeans. So right now I have uh, three classes here. The DB connections is giving us a connection here. Student class retrieving some data from the student table. And we have the main class. Now for that we need to create another class. So I'm just going to right click a new Java class. And we can just say input. Let's just say input. That's fine. And then we click on finish to create this class. Let's just get rid of these comments here. And in the class, I'm just going to create a new method, actually a couple of methods. So let's just type public static and the return type would be string. Then we can just type get input method string and type in value as a parameter. And then in that, I'm going to use a class named a buffer reader. So buffer reader class let's just name it a buffer is equal to a new buffer reader class and then here we're gonna create a new input stream reader so we create that and then here we're gonna pass in system dot in all right so we got the buffer reader object now and now we're gonna print out few things here so I just wanna print out as out and we're going to print out a value. Next, we're going to flush that printout. So let's just type system out, actually, system out dot flush. Okay. And then we are going to use a try and catch block. And in the try and catch block, I'm going to type return. And we can return the buffer object dot read line method. Okay, we'll read the string from that. And we have a second method. I named it get int and I pass in string as and a value as a parameter. And then we're just printing out an in variable and we're calling the get input method and we're passing in the value. And then we're just returning integer.parse int and then we're passing in as a variable. So basically we are converting that string to integer. Now let's go to the main class. In the main class, we are going to get rid of this uh, SQL execute query. And then on the top, we're going to create a new variable. So I'm just going to type private static final string. And we name it SQL is equal to. And in double quotation now, we're going to use our SQL statement. So type select. And we can pass in the table. Uh, column names or we can just say it's direct but I would, re I would recommend that the type the table names so that's a good practice so here we can say ID comma I'm going to say first name comma and then fee and then we're going to say from students so students is our table name and then I'm going to say where fee less than equal to and we're going to type question mark which is a placeholder for that variable i actually got rid of all the code in main method so i could explain to you guys so i'm going to start writing from the scratch so the first thing we're going to declare is a double variable so let's just type double and i'm going to name it max fee and then we're going to start a try and catch block so type tri enter and then we can type here max fee is equal to and then we're going to use our class which we just created the input class so type input and we're going to call get int method and here we can pass in let's just say enter uh, maximum okay and then in the next uh, in exception 
we can catch the we can print out the exception so I'm just gonna try system error print and here we can just say error invalid number so invalid number that's fine and then we need to return that as well so just type return and down here we are going to create a result set so we're going to use the result set class now so type result set rs I'm gonna instantiate it with a null and then we're gonna start another try and catch block so in that type in that try block so we're gonna start a connection first so type connection we're gonna name it con is equal to and then we're gonna use a db connection class we get connection method and add semicolon and then instead of using statement we need to use a prepared statement so just type prepared statement name it stmt and then we're going to use a connection con dot prepare statement so this is the one and then here we can pass in sql that's our variable on top for our query from sql comma oops have to type sql here and need to get rid of this comma and then type comma and then result set dot and then we use the type scroll insensitive then comma result set dot we're gonna select read only all right and then add a semicolon at the end and then we're going to use that stmt now and then we are going to set column method set double and then in the parameters we type one and then the max v all right so the next line is going to be our result set so type our result set variable rs is equal to our statement variable dot execute query and here we don't have to pass in anything because we already passed in SQL here in the prepared statement alright so the next line we're going to display the data from there so just type students dot get student method okay and pass in our RS object there now in the catch actually we need to type this at the bottom so let's just remove this area here we don't need it and let's go to the end and paste it here in the exception we need to catch SQL exception instead of simple exception SQL exception and then we're gonna print out the error which is going to be system error and then here we pass an E okay next we need to close our result set as well so let's just come down here finally and then we close that if rs not equal to null and down here we can just say rs.close method okay all right so there's one thing we're gonna fix here on the top in SQL string as you can see we're selecting from ID first name fee from students where fee less than equal to this question mark which is a placeholder but I actually already declared uh, in the student class so we're getting the data from there so we are actually getting that student first name there so I'm just going to make I'm just gonna add a static here instead of we selecting the table so we'll select everything we have in the table so that's fine now and now if I run the code I'll get enter the maximum fee so let's just type 200 enter and now we got two students which are $200 or less than $200 so if we go back to the database and here you can see that Tom and Michelle has $200 and Michelle has $100 fee so if I'm gonna go back to NetBeans and let's just run the application again and okay 
why it's taking so long but let's just run it and I'm gonna type 400 this time and enter and now we got all the students because the maximum uh, fee is 400 so lower than 400 is gonna get printed so that's it for this video guys this is how you can use prepared statement to you know this is a program where you can access something like you know if you want lower let's say you're creating a project where you have some tours or prices so you can deal with the prices so if you want to just retrieve the prices a data from a particular price which is lower than something then you can use this code and uh, yeah that's it for this video and I'll talk to you guys in the next video cheese what is up everybody this is a waste back with the next video on java jdbc tutorial series i've done about seven videos on jdbc so this is going to be the last video or maybe a second last video for that tutorial series so we've been learning how to read data how to modify data from database using mysql and java so in this video i'm going to show you how to add data to databases but before we jump into our tutorial, I just want to show you a demo application, what I've been building. So I'm just going to run this application. This is a school system I've been working on. And uh, you can let me know in the comments below that if you want to know how to build this application, I will sh do a separate tutorial. It has been built uh, on JavaFX using uh, MVC Patron and MySQL database. So here, first we label, we can see that we are connected to database and then I'm going to type here username and then the password. And then if I go to select, and then I have two options, student or admin. So I haven't finished the student part yet, but I did a little bit of work on admin. So let's just uh, click on login and I will see this window now. So here I have this table where I can see the data from the database from the students. I have uh, two tabs here. One is empty because I'm still working on this application and in the student tab I have student here and then I can add the details as well. So if you want to see whatever the data I have in the database I'll just click on load data and I got this information back. Let's just quickly add ID. We can say 32 Tom at gmail.com and we can just pick a date of birth for him that's fine and then I'm gonna click on add student and then if I click on load data as you can see it's pretty fast so I got the Michael back I'll do a separate video on this uh, full application once it's ready because I'm gonna be adding a search feature and a lot more option to this uh, application this is going to be a full-on school system now we're going to look at how to write data to a database. For that, I'm just going to close this application and we're going to open our previous project I've been using to make this tutorial series. Alright guys, so we have this project open, JDBC Tutorial. I've got three classes in that. I've shown you how to connect to database by using a separate class. So we have a DBUtil class where we get the connection and we have jdbc tutorial class which has a main method so in the main method i've got a connection and i am inquiring the database whatever the data i have in the database let's just run the application first and as you can see that the result we're getting is whatever the database we have let me just show you go to the chrome and i'll show you all right so these are the entries we have in the database okay let's go back to netbeans now i have created a new class add student so this class is going to help us to add student to the database i'm actually uh, going to create a method here so method's going to be public void it's not going to do anything and we can say uh, add okay so in that we need few things we need id f name string l name string email string dob all right so we have this method in this class let me just go back to database in this table we have a id column f name column l name email gb so that's what entries we made uh, let's just go back to netbeans now okay so here 
in that I'm going to first of all use a try and catch block okay so I'm going to use the add with resources so I can add the connection like that it's um, if you're using Java 8 that's uh, supported so we can say connection con is equal to dbutil.get connection we got the connection from there I've got to import that SQL class and then I'm going to use a prepaid statement class is equal to con dot prepaid statement okay so we need to import that prepaid statement class now we got connection we got this uh, prepaid statement so the first thing what we need to do is we need to create our SQL query so type string type SQL is equal to insert into and we're going to use our table name which is students okay so I've added that query here so we got insert into the name of our table and then we got our column name f name l name all the column names and then we type values and then you have to add a placeholders just kind of forgot to add a semicolon here we need to add a placeholder so we have a five columns so we type five question marks okay so one two three four five all right so now let's just come here so we have created a connection we got the prepaid statement we got stmt object now let's use that stmt object dot set string okay now it's got two parameters first the placeholder number which is going to be one for id and here we're going to type id as our string here so we pass it in our method parameters okay so that's fine and then stmt dot set string two and then number two is f name let's just come down set string and then three that's l name all right and then we can type stmt dot set string four that's email stmt dot set string five that's dob okay now we can simply say stmt dot execute okay so our this class is done now so we can call I'm just gonna create an empty constructor I'm just gonna come back to it okay so let's just add empty constructor here okay so now let's go to our main method in the main method we are displaying our data whatever the data we have in a database so after this uh, catch I'm gonna stay in the main method and here I'm going to create a scanner object first scanner and we can say input is equal to new scanner and then here I'm going to type system dot in okay so we got that all right so I added a scanner object and then I print out on the console saying do you want to add a student okay and then i ask for an answer using that scanner object all right so the variable answer will get the answer from there now i could make it more robust uh, but for simply simply a demonstration i use the condition statement here so i said if answer what are the answer we get from our scanner object from the input so we can check that answer dot equal ignore case to yes if i type yes and then it will run this code now so here we have five variables such as we print out for uh, enter id enter first name enter last name and enter email and enter date of birth and then after each printout we got the variable which takes the value from console 
And now after once we get all the values, what I can do, I am actually going to make an object from add student classes type add student and let's just name it create is equal to new add student class okay now after that I can use that create object and I call that add method from there so that add method needs five parameters or object five variable so we can set that ID to this ID, F name to this F name, last name to last name, email to email and date of birth to date of birth. Okay, so after we got all the values and we put it into this method which will process the data for us and it is going to as execute the query in this method. Okay. So finally, I'm just going to run this. Uh, I actually added a few more entries to test it out. So let's just run the application. All right, so we got, do you want to add students? And if I type yes, and it's gonna ask me enter ID. So I can just say 60, or maybe let's just say 10, and then I press enter, and then let's just type the name. So the name, I'm going to type my brother's name, so Aspen, first name, last name, Mirza, email Aspen at gmail.com, don't try to email him on this email because this is a fake, and the date of birth, let's just say 10 slash, maybe use the dash, 10 dash 2020, okay? He hasn't born yet. So I press enter again and then build successful. Now I'm going to run the application again, which will read the data from the database and I will see if the Aspen has been added. All right, so as you can see, that Aspen has been added. We can check that in database as well. I actually opened my YouTube channel in a second. Okay, so here I don't see any Aspen in the table. I'll just refresh it. And there you go. So we got ID 10, Aspen, first name, Mirza, last name, email address, and date of birth. So our application our program is working. So this is how simply you can add data to database. I'll do a separate video or maybe the next video I'll show you how to add images into databases actually links of that images using a binary uh, a database data type and then add that image table here so we can reference that to database and then link back to the images uh, folder all right so this is a very simple tutorial i've done pretty much uh, i've shown you in database how to read data how to loop through data how to modify data and how to add data to database so this is kind of last video but i'll do a separate video there's a few tricks uh, still left to show you guys so stay tuned for that guys any question let me know in the comments below and you can follow me on twitter at always mirza01 at uh, on the Twitter, Facebook, the same ID as well. Links are in the description. Thank you so much for watching and I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Chase.